Hey, how you guys doing? So in this video, I'm going to talk about what Blender EV is in a nutshell. I'm going to show you some examples, previews from other artists that used Blender EV and did some awesome, awesome work. I'll also show you some examples of some work I did, and I'll talk about the pros, the cons, and I will also tell you who I personally think it is for and why am I super excited for Blender EV and what does it mean for this channel. What I won't do in this video is talk about the technicalities of Blender EV. So I'm not going to go into details on how it works. I'm sure there are a lot of videos out there that already explain that and you can go to blender.org and get more information over there. So what is Blender EV? Well, instead of explaining it as a physically based rendering engine for real time visualization, let me put it this way. Imagine you have a model in Blender. Now, instead of hitting the render button and waiting for the samples to go up so that you get some results, you basically get it in real time. That's insane. So I'm not talking about baking the texture into the model and viewing it in the viewport because that's something you can already do with cycles. I'm talking about basically manipulating the materials just like you do in cycles and actually seeing what's happening in the viewports and that goes for animation it goes for everything else and you can take that out as an animation so instead of spending hours and hours rendering you basically get the result right away well depends on your computer and what you're doing but almost instant so the thing about blender ev is that it is still in development so a lot of new features are still being added in it's still getting improved and sss recently got implemented so i got excited took one of my 3d models did a really quick texture job on her opened up Blender EV and I just tested it out. To be honest, without going through any tutorials, I pretty much got the gist of it. I didn't really do a crazy scene, so maybe it gets more difficult, but if you know how cycles work, it's not really that different. It uses the principal shader, you know, when I used it at least, and I just got really awesome results quite fast very happy with it. So I took what I got and posted it on different social platforms. Now I got some traction and to my surprise, a lot of people did not know what Blender EV is. In fact, a lot of people didn't even know it existed. So getting a lot of questions, I decided to make this video. One of the best ways to explain something is to show it. So let's look at more previews and examples from other artists. Okay, so this is my favorite. This is by Paul. He did a series of space renders and they are looking so, so good. I mean, just check them out. I'm going to add links in the description below to all the videos that I'm using so you can check it out in full. And just keep in mind, he did use After Effects to do some post-production, but also keep in mind that Blender EV is still in production and maybe when it's done, he could get these results without doing any After Effects or using any other programs. So just wow this scene is by danielle testing out the sss with his bug creature and it is looking really awesome check out the reddish zones around the legs of the bug and around the body and everywhere else here's a cool video by dum testing out volume metrics with japanese mountains and buildings playing around with ambient occlusion depth of field bloom in real time it is looking spectacular this one is an awesome scene by zach who you have probably seen on this channel when i collaborated with him and it's just so so cool because he basically took one of the renders that he did in cycles a long time ago i believe for a competition and took it to blender ev and just transformed it to this awesome scene with a lot of cool lightings and a lot of volumetrics here's a real-time classroom by leroy now i believe the scene is by someone else that can be downloaded through blender org but the video was posted by leroy and it's just really cool to see different type of scenes and environments and things basically in real time in Blender EV, giving us a quick idea of what it's capable of. Here's a really cool one by Emiliano, his wasp bot in Blender EV. Now he rendered this character in Cycles first and got almost the same results in Blender EV. In fact, I personally prefer the results he got in Blender EV, which is really cool. So in this case, we can compare both of the engines in a way and we also can see the awesome amount of details you can get with the bump map and the specs in Blender EV, which must I remind you is in real time. Okay, so this one actually kind of goes side to side with the space renders. I really love this one as well. It's a cartoony render by Glenn. It's an old scene that he did and he basically dusted it off for Blender EV and did some testing. It's looking really awesome. Again, I'll add the links in the description below to watch the whole thing, but just look at the lights, all of the colorful lights you got over there, the greens, the yellows, and 
just it's, it's such a delight to see a cartoony style like that in real time. Here's a really cool one by Danielle, which looks like a movie scene and we're getting all of that in real time. And we can see some really good depth of field, some good amount of details. And I believe at a point he even did some real time sculpting, which is really awesome. Okay, now that we have watched some awesome examples of Blender EV by different artists, let's talk about the pros and the cons. So for the pros, first of all, instant awesomeness, you know? We've already seen a lot of examples, it's just really good. It looks so awesome. Second thing is valuable time. So whenever you want to test out materials or create materials for complicated things like characters, imagine working with subsurface scattering and having to render out every time you tinker the SSS or anything else in the material. Trust me, you're going to do a lot of that. And it's going to take hours and hours or maybe even days just changing values and rendering things out. Now that's a lot of time wasted, which is personally why I usually don't go to the texturing phase with characters. However, with Blender EV that changes. It's instant, so you gain so much time. While we're still talking about valuable time, think about animations. You could spend days or hours or even months rendering an animation with cycles. In Blender EV, all of that is gone. You don't have to worry about render farms or you know, using your computer all night long or anything like that, or even deadlines, you just get it really fast. So that's a really cool thing to look out for in Blender Eevee. Another thing I know I am looking forward to is the lack of fireflies. With cycles, that is such an issue, especially when you're doing things like a lot of reflections, glossiness, and subsurface scattering. You have to boost up that sampling so high to get something that's decent without Firefly. Or use some add-on of noise canceling. I've heard of it, didn't use it, but I saw some results and it kind of removes from the sharpness of the result that you get, which I don't like. So yeah, and Blender Eevee, no more. Now I'm sure Blender Eevee has a lot more pros, but let's talk about the cons. For the cons, honestly, it's probably the limitations, right? Like in Cycles, it took time to get all the features that we have today. So in Blender EV, if you're used to having all of the stuff you have in Cycles, you might miss some of that stuff in Blender EV, at least in the beginning, right? And the other thing about Blender EV is that from what I've heard at least is it's not as realistic as Cycles. So you can't really get the realism in Blender EV to the point that you can with Cycles. That said, from all the results I'm seeing, I'm really preferring the renders in Eevee. Now, that will probably depend on the situation and the scene, but the thing is, as an artist, you always have to ask yourself, realism versus appeal. It's not always the same thing. So, you could take it as a con, or not. In case you're wondering who it is for, I can definitely see it go with concept artists. I think concept artists are going to enjoy Blender Eevee to the full potential. I know I am. And then we have animators, probably have a lot of fun with it. Layout artists, probably game designers, who knows? A lot of different creative ways to use this program. Well, you know, engine. Last but not least, why am I excited for this? What does it mean for the channel? And what does it mean for you guys as well? So first things first, I'm really excited to see different character artists do amazing animations, just like the ones we've seen. And just keep in mind, it's still in beta. I mean, imagine the stuff we're gonna see once Blender EV is officially released. I'm really looking forward to it. Second thing is you're gonna see more textured renders from me. So usually if you've been following me, you'll know that a lot of my renders are just clay renders of my sculpts. And the reason I do that is because I don't wanna spend too much time with the technicalities of, you know, rendering and samples and fireflies and all of that crap. I personally prefer to focus on the artistic side of things. And now that I don't have to spend time worrying about render times and, you know, the creation of the material, how long it'll take, I'll be able to spend time texturing the character and just showing you some really cool stuff. Also, instead of just seeing a static render of my characters or other people as well, now there's the possibility of doing a really slight, small animation, maybe a small camera movement with the character slightly moving and I think that will completely change the way we render out the characters and it's not going to take a lot of time because of Blender Eevee, so that is definitely a possibility for this channel. Also, I am thinking of making really short film. So I don't really have time for long films or even like a few minutes, but the fact that Blender Eevee 
allows us to do a lot of cool stuff in real time, you'll definitely see some really short animations from me. And one that I'm planning to do really soon as a test is with the skull and the hands. I won't really talk a lot about it because it's still out there, but I'm definitely planning to do a really short animation with that. One more thing, I'm also planning to create a texture course for beginners using the character that I showed you, so the girl character. The thing is, Blender Eevee motivated me to texture characters now that I don't have to worry about render times. So now I can create a really cool course for you guys on that. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give me a like on the video. Also leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what are you excited about with Blender Eevee. Do you want to see the little animation I'm doing in Blender Eevee? And finally, last but not least, you're the artist. The program does not do the art. Never forget that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.